All right. So our next step, the line tool, is going to be a brush. And it's a real special brush. There's actually two brushes that can do it, and I'll show you both. I'm going to start with the standard brush, which is the old school part of ZBrush. I'm going to lower that draw size down to a fine dot. And since ZAD is on, I'm going to press Alt to cut in. Because again, if I don't press Alt, it's going to pull out. And this is bad. Don't do this where you pull the lips out as these separate things. The hallmark of doing this wrong is that you get these bubble lips. That's not the way we want to do this. We want to do this like a sculptor, which is we establish the overall form and then we start to carve in and then add little tiny bits for accent. But we want to hold to this profile. So a standard brush, lower it, press Alt, and that's going to do a really good job. Okay, I'm going to put this over here on the side, go to transform, I'm going to press this, this camera icon that snapshots it. Wow, a lot of distortion. And I'm going to press Control Z, Control Z, and I want to show you another brush. Click. I come down into these S's and it's called the slash 3 brush. Now if you want an easy way to access these, you can press B on the keyboard, that's B for brush, and it pops up, it'll pop up wherever I am, B, and then I press S for the S brushes, and then whatever that orange number or letter is, in this case, 3. So you can get really quick with this. Curve tube snap, that's a totally different brush, and I did it all within like milliseconds. So I'm going to press B, S, 3, and it's done. Now I'm going to look up here. I don't have to press Alt because Z sub is already active. And you'll notice it's got this really strong focal shift. That's why the brush looks so big, but it's only affecting this little tiny region. And look at how dramatic, how strong that is. That's a really good knife because it just gets in there with precision and cuts it out. That's what I want to do. So now I'm going to go into a layer and I'm just going to say clear. That gets rid of this guy up in here. So again, layer and clear will remove any crazies hanging out. And so we've done this in a very sculptural way. We created our mound we used one tool that sliced in, and that tool quite naturally created some of the um, some of the uh, surface and the uh, surface characteristics that we need. So now we just come in and we start to adjust it. So before I do anything else, I am going to use slash three, and I'm, I'm going to lightly start to outline that lower lip. So my lines are line of the lip and then outline the lower lip. That's my craftsmanship way of approaching this that sets me up for success. And then what I do is I come in and I'll smooth this plane out so that becomes a little bit more natural. And then we'll start smoothing out sections as well as adding clay back in so we get what you'll see in Edouard Lanteri's book of these five very distinct forms of the lips, which you can really see in Michelangelo's those uh, um, castings that you can get of features. You'll really see this in his lips one. So I've done that. I'm going to press Shift. See on the side like I told you. I'm going to leave this alone because that represents that profile that I'd already sculpted and I don't want to adjust that because that was that was done from the side view. Okay, now I also want to press shift and smooth this out a little bit. And notice that the upper lip is dominant over the lower lip. It's this big overhanging shape. That big overhanging shape is really important you need it to overhang that's in most humans that's the way it happens not all but in most and normally we know it if the lower lip hangs out more 
then it's something that is less usual and we'll notice that. But in this case, we'll stick to the norm and just keep that as a little bit subservient. And then I'm going to smooth this out a little bit. I'm going to smooth that out. And now I'm, I'm using smooth as a sculpting tool. lightly and from a distance that really works we got more work to do but it makes a difference and it sets me up so I can come in with slash get the corners a little bit then I'm gonna press alt I'm gonna start to pull that out and alt and um, start to pull that out but now now we definitely need to approach that geometry question. How much geometry do we need? Where do we need it? Stuff like that.